A brand new report from the Daily Mail reveals longtime Biden ally Alexander Mackler reportedly sent messages to a secret email address belonging to then Vice President Biden shortly before joining David Weiss's office. Mackler has been in the president's orbit for years now, dating back to 2007 during Biden's days as a senator. Now Congress wants to get to the bottom of it, demanding records of Biden's personal email addresses. Let's bring in Saul Weisenberg, Fox News contributor and former deputy independent counsel. Saul, great to have you here. Uh, what does all of this mean to you? What should it mean to people at home? Actually, I don't think it means very much. The, the broader problem is that the Hunter Biden investigation should have never been sent to the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office precisely because of the Biden's influence in, De in Delaware, the, the influence of a senator on any U.S. Attorney's Office in his or her state, uh, all, all of the particulars there. And I've said this before, I'm a big fan of Bill Barr, but he made a big mistake when he sent it there and it shouldn't have been kept there. As for Mackler himself, I think he was gone from that office a month after the investigation began. So unless we find out that there was some kind of secret channel with him after he left or that he had some influence we don't know about, I think that part of the story is just um, not, not a big story. Yeah, but certainly, Saul, there seems to be uh, evidence of a cozy relationship between Mackler and the Bidens in the years and even months that were leading up to the investigation. This email from July 7, 2015, uh, to the entire Biden clan after the death of Bo Biden from Mackler saying, losing Bo has been particularly difficult because no one believed in me like he did. The thought of going through life without his endless, sometimes incessant encouragement and guidance feels like climbing a mountain with no rope. Then July the 8th, 18th, 2018, which I believe was shortly before Weiss's office. He was U.S. attorney for Delaware at that time, shortly before the investigation in Hunter began. This email from Mackler to Hunter Biden, love you, hope you're good, call sometime. Uh, you know, our Kerry Kupek, uh, Urban, was on the other day talking about this thing called the Delaware Way which is the cozy relationship that people in power in Delaware have with each other. This would seem to be an indication of that in practice. Well, uh, as an example of the Delaware way, it's an example of the kind of political appointments that you have in a lot of U.S. attorneys' offices around the country, large or small. You know, the, the, US, the U.S. senator from the party in power in the White House uh, will often have an effect on who gets hired in U.S. attorney's offices. I've, 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 I saw it happen back in my day in a, in a very big office. But there's nothing inherently unethical about the fact that somebody close to a senator gets a job as an assistant U.S. attorney. It would have been a real scandal if Mackler had any kind of say in the Hunter Biden inv investigation. But like I say, it's not unethical that he got a job, but it's indicative of why it never should have been sent. The case never should mm -hmm. have been sent to a small district like Delaware, where, where, you know, President Biden visited the office and chatted with staff during the investigation. It just is a, is a recipe for a non-aggressive prosecution. Now, there has been a report that Mackler was close and did some cases with Leslie Wolf. Which is who, as you know, was the AUSA in charge of the mm -hmm. investigation, assistant U.S. attorney, and and who the whistleblowers complained about. If it turns out that there was some kind of uh, communication going on, back-channel communication after he left, and that was going to the Bidens, that's a big scandal. But we have no indication that that happened. All right, we'll keep I know watching. it's sexy to talk about it, but he was but he was gone a month after the investigation started. Well, uh, there's certainly big questions swirling around that. Uh, we'll continue to ask them. Meanwhile, I want to ask you about Hunter Biden, Saul, traveling to at least 13 countries with his then vice president father when he was leading his now defunct firm Rosemont Seneca Partners and what we're learning about that. It's a new Fox News digital uh, review and what they found, including video footage, Saul, along with Secret Service records and messages previously reported from Hunter's abandoned laptop, okay, that show Hunter, who uh, co founded Rosemont Seneca back in 2009, with Devin Archer, Archer and Christopher Hines, accompanied by then Vice President Joe Biden during official trips to Europe, Central America, Africa, and Asia. Uh, we also know that during the Obama administration, Hunter also attended several state dinners. 
We're also learning that Hunter Biden in 2020 decided to drop Secret Service protection. Um, could this have been for any reason other than uh, concern that his father might be implicated in some of these business deals? Well, it's incredibly sleazy to have been doing what he was doing, basically accompanying his father on business repeatedly, official U.S. government business, and then using it as his own business opportunity. And I would think that if he had Secret Service protection while he was, uh, while he was on Burisma's board and doing business uh, with them, it would look even too bad for Hunter. There's not much that embarrassed him, apparently, but that would look even too bad for him. So that's a very good guess on, uh, on your part. And I think Congress should definitely keep digging, because I'm going to tell you something. You aren't going to get anything from the U.S. from the investigation by David Weiss. It doesn't matter whether you call him special counsel or special poobah. Uh, it was a mistake to have him do it. And here's, and here's something nobody else is seems to be talking about. Hunter Biden's lawyers think the pretrial diversion agreement he entered into, which has a broad immunity provision, they think that's still in effect. And let me tell you something, that is a very, that is not a frivolous legal point. So even if David Weiss somehow wanted now to indict Hunter Biden for felony tax evasion, there's a very strong argument that mm. because of that diversion deal they entered into with him, it ain't going to happen. So if Congress doesn't do it, if the House doesn't do it and use their subpoena power, I don't think anybody's going to. Yeah, that's the point, certainly, that Hunter Biden's attorneys are making, saying, hey, this diversion program on the gun charge, that was signed by both sides. That's still in effect. The DOJ begs to differ, but we'll see how it goes. Just in terms of what Sandra was talking about, Hunter flying around the world on Air Force Two, ostensibly for some business meetings. Here's an email from April of 2010 from Hunter Biden to his business associate, Mark Doyle, in which he says, how about we go over around May 10th? JRB, which we assume is Joe R. R. Biden, will be in Madrid, and I can catch a ride with him and fly over to Serbia and back with you. That obtained exclusively by Fox News Digital. I mean, is, is that evidence there, Saul, to, to your mind, that he, he was using Air Force Two like a private airline? It sure seems like it. Again, there's a lot of what you can do in Washington if you're part of the political class or a family member of a politician that unfortunately is not illegal but it's definitely it's definitely part of the picture and look this is this is something that our own government officials in the Obama administration were concerned about uh, the diplomat, I think his name was George uh, Kent, in the Ukraine. He raised concerns about it, and basically nobody could talk to Joe Biden about it. He'd, he'd apparently get upset when you talk about him. There's an uh, official high in the energy department that raised, they both raised the concern that, wait a minute, we've got an anti-corruption message that we're trying to purvey in the Ukraine, and we've got the vice president's son working for the most corrupt company. So that's a problem. Saul, thanks for joining us today on all of that. Appreciate the analysis. Thanks for having me. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Saul. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.